Um, I think we need to revisit this. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Build Bar, and we'll be taking a look at fitness YouTuber Natasha Ocean. But first, let me tell you about my sponsor, Build Bar. So all my regular subbies know I talk about building snacks and meals with my hunger crushing combo in mind, and that means fiber, healthy fats, and protein. So Built Bars are a staple for providing the protein piece, and bonus, they actually taste like chocolate because they're made with real chocolate. So today's flavor is, talk about chocolate, coconut brownie chunk. What? Oh yeah, she's a favorite around here. Mm. Guys, there are mounds of coconut in here. Oh my God. Mm. I lied. Mm. Mounds of brownie. Mmm. Mm. These ones are so good. So good. So good. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so 15 grams of protein, super tasty on its own, and paired with a source of fiber-rich carbs like oatmeal or fruit, and a little healthy fat action, maybe some nut butter or nuts, and we have a super, super satiating balanced snack. So if you wanna give Built Bars a try, check out my link in the description and use my promo code ABBYSHARP15 to get 15% off of your order. And you can pause the screen or look at the description and check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with current or previous experiences with disordered eating. As always, feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. And if you are not already subscribed, hit that sub button, ring that bell and follow me over on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. So I first reviewed Natasha back in 2019. Ah, yes, a year of hope and possibility. But anyways, you can watch that video right here if you'd like. And I think over the past two and a bit years, we've both grown a lot. Personally, I know that I've better refined my position on things like weight loss, intuitive eating, health at every size, body positivity, and the anti-diet movement. And I think my regular followers all better understand the purpose of these reviews. It's not about telling a creator their way of eating is wrong or bad if it works for their body and satisfies their needs. My notes are actually not even so much even for the creator specifically themselves, but rather, the purpose of what I eat in a day videos in general should be for meal and snack inspiration or recipe ideas, not as a copy and paste meal plan for all of you guys at home. And as a result, my critique of said what I eat in a days serve less as a nutrition counseling session for the creator specifically, as it is more of a series of teachable moments for helping all of you collect data on how to build satiating and satisfying meals. So I'm so glad that we've been through this journey together and my message now feels a lot more clear, though of course I am refining it and learning and growing every day. And at the end of this video, I'm going to address my previous critique of Natasha's content related to intuitive eating for fat loss or body composition goals. But let's first take a look at a recent day of eats for Natasha. Okay, this toast looks awesome. We've got fiber rich carbs in the bread, apple and granola, plus protein fiber and healthy fats in the chia and peanut butter. I also love making chia jam for the week, so I'm gonna leave a link below to my go-to recipe. Ooh, this is my jam. This is my, turn that song off. This is my jam. But chia seeds specifically are a great sprinkle, as I call them, for good digestion, because an ounce of chia seeds contains 11 grams of fiber, which kind of gels with water in the gut, helping to reduce cholesterol and blood sugar levels, improve regularity, and increase satiety. So I see them as a hunger crushing combo triple threat, all on their own. So when we were in Greece, I didn't really plan on doing any workouts. However, there was an insane looking gym. So I snuck like two, 
two little workouts in there just because I felt like I had to honestly I just I really did it would have been an opportunity missed so as I discussed in my video on eating intuitively on vacation I think it can be very hard for some of us type a personalities to let go of our rigid workout and eating routines when we go on vacation but I think traveling is a really great way to kind of throw yourself into a more intuitive lifestyle by forcing yourself to reevaluate routines that maybe aren't serving you well and it sounds to me like even though Natasha put no pressure on herself to work out while in Greece that as a fitness lover herself it was actually just like a really fun thing for her to do to try out the amazing facilities and that's actually typically what happens when we remove the pressure and the rules from fitness and food they actually just become something we like I love weight training <laughs> It makes me feel really strong. So in case you're new to Natasha's content, in early 2020, she suffered a lower back injury, which set her back on her training for several months. But she's been slowly rehabilitating and regaining her strength back. And it's clear that this progress really brings her joy, which obviously we love to see. Just tell me the plates don't elevate, right? This looks like an amazing salad right here. So. We've got loads of protein in the salmon and the chickpeas, healthy fats in the fish and olive oil, and lots of fiber rich veg. And while there is a solid amount of carbs in the chickpeas, so probably around 30 grams, depending on how much she had in her bowl, for an optimal post-workout snack after intense workout like this, we might get better glycogen recovery with a bit more carbs in there. So that could mean adding in some pita on the side or throwing in any leftover cooked grains to her bowl. Oh my gosh. I just want to watch that caramel folding action on slow-mo all day. If you say fold in one more time. It says fold it in. Everyone who knows me in real life knows that salted caramel and caramel popcorn and ice cream are my three favorite food groups of all time. So this recipe is definitely my jam. Okay, now I know this took time, so it's not like this bowl of happiness is going down right after the workout. But hey, I mean, if we want to replenish those glycogen stores I talked about with salted caramel, I wouldn't be mad about it. And while I strongly get the sense that Natasha didn't deliberately have a lower carb lunch to accommodate her ice cream snack, I also think that it likely feels intuitive to, you know, crave a creamy bowl of ice cream after having a fresh protein and produce rich meal salad for lunch. So I approve. This is gorgeous, uh, super beautifully balanced and also nutrient rich. So we've got carbs in the rice, fiber in the slaw, protein in the chicken and some fat in the dressing and cooking oils. Now, a lot of people ask me if white rice is bad for you. And to that, of course, I give a big fat hell no. No food is bad for you, as you guys all know by now. And white rice actually has a lot of redeeming qualities. So it's an easily digestible carb packed with B vitamins. And it's also lower in impurities like arsenic than its healthified cousin brown rice. So if you prefer white rice to brown, like we do in my house, don't feel the need to forgo what you like because wellness culture says so. My tip is to do as Natasha did and pair that white rice with hunger crushing compounds, which will help to drive down the overall glycemic load, which will help to stabilize insulin and blood sugar levels and keep you satiated longer. Okay, that pink apple, too pretty. And since I get the sense that there are no food rules for Natasha, that there's no necessary need to have a more decadent dessert if she isn't feeling it. Sometimes you're just craving something juicy and sweet and light and a bowl of fresh fruit just hits different. But I will say if you struggle with hunger during the evening or throughout the night, we could give this snack the hunger crushing combo treatment by combining the apple with some cottage cheese and some nuts or dipping it in some full fat Greek yogurt or almond butter. So what are my overall thoughts on Natasha's diet? Well, based on our calculations on this particular day, Natasha is consuming somewhere in the range of 2,000, 2,200 calories. Any 
even though these are very rough guidelines, this likely falls within her needs especially given that she's training less frequently and intensely because of her injury. So her body might naturally crave less calories than it did during her more intense training days pre-injury. And seeing as Natasha identifies as an intuitive eater, and it seems quite apparent that there aren't any hard and fast food rules at play, I trust that she has a very good handle on her own personal data. So yeah, I feel that she would respond to her hunger without judgment as she did when she felt like she needed an extra chicken leg, for example, at the end of her dinner meal. She's hungry, she eats. She craves ice cream, she has ice cream. Now with that said, I did want to share some thoughts on Natasha's approach and her own personal goal to lose fat or change her body composition while simultaneously describing herself as an intuitive eater. So in the past, I have felt the need to react to folks who like co-opt the intuitive eating movement as another trendy way to change your body. Because the first step in the OG intuitive eating model as developed by Elise Resch and Evelyn Triboli is to reject the diet mentality. And shortly after that, it is to honor and respect your body as it is. In practice, when someone is healing their relationship with food, we really need to see these steps mastered first before you can learn any gentle nutrition tips. And I think that's where messages that combine intuitive eating and body recomp can get quite messy for folks to grasp. I think it can be unfair to tell someone that they can lose fat and build muscle through intuitive eating when that was never the intention of this eating model. That doesn't mean that you won't lose fat or gain muscle when eating intuitively, but I would say intention is really, really important here. By definition, most intuitive eating therapists and coaches would agree that purposeful manipulation of the body is not compatible with the intuitive eating model for all the reasons that I just outlined a moment ago and that I discuss in my intuitive eating series right here. But before you guys rip into me for calling out our girl Natasha on this, I want to just say that I don't get the sense that she is trying to sell you some false promise of like an intuitive eating fat loss diet. I think ultimately this comes down to semantics and that what she's describing is really just eating mindfully and listening to her hunger cues and satiety cues and incorporating gentle nutrition tips that she knows are favorable to her aesthetic goals without sacrificing her happiness. And I wanna make it clear that above all else, I respect body autonomy. I see nothing wrong with having aesthetic goals or sport goals. And as long as the behaviors required to help you meet those goals aren't triggering for you, I say go little rock star. But ultimately, I think when I reviewed Natasha two and a half years ago, I was still at a point professionally where I really wanted to follow the rules. I didn't know there were any rules. And it's kind of taboo in anti-diet circles to talk about fat loss or weight loss, especially in the same breath as intuitive eating. But I'm like an old mom now. I've been through two years of COVID and isolation hell and five years of IVF and, and pregnancy and motherhood and breastfeeding. So let's just say I'm getting too old to give a f about words. I don't wanna be a gatekeeper of this term. I didn't create it, I didn't write the book, and I realized that today in 2022, it's taken on a meaning somewhat different than what was originally intended by its creators. And a lot of IE experts are going to completely disagree with me on this, but I think as long as we are not deceptively selling intuitive eating as a weight loss or a fat loss diet, which I don't think that Natasha is, then I personally don't really care what words are being used. Call yourself an intuitive eater, a mindful eater, a circle eater. I don't care. If you want to label your diet, you do you. I think you guys should absolutely do your own thing. I think it definitely would piss other intuitive eating experts off out there, but I'm just at a place and a point in my career where I really wanna just meet people where they are. And I have a lot of newfound patience and empathy for people's own learning and eating journeys. But what I want to say about Natasha's journey specifically is that whether or not a goal to lose fat is against the tenets of intuitive eating, I do think she's clearly in tune with her own cues and isn't going to restrict herself unnecessarily despite her goals. 
So she'll have an extra piece of chicken if she's hungry, or she'll leave half her toast when she's full. There's nothing extreme about anything going on here that I would personally deem like a red flag or problematic. I also think because of her solid relationship with food that she's better able to integrate gentle nutrition tips into her day without it triggering a restriction binge cycle. So let's take a quick look for some examples. I kept ordering delivery, but I made healthier food choices in my delivery deliveries. So I'd be swapping that creamy mash from Nando's with some corn or some broccoli or some sweet potato. So I think this is a great compromise to balance like a convenience meal with more nutrient dense side dishes. I don't honestly think she needs to forego the creamy mash if she loves it so much, but maybe adding a veggie side in there can help to naturally shift portions and offer more variety in her day without triggering scarcity mentality. I'll be eating about three to four portions of veg and two to three portions of fruit. Never put any foods off limits. So if there's a celebration or if I just really fancy it, I can eat any food that I want. So I've discussed a similar gentle nutrition tip in my video on weight loss here, but I do appreciate that she's not being super rigid or strict or taking on a grossly calorie restricted diet. Instead, she's simply focusing on what she can add to her diet, like more fruits and vegetables, which will not only add more nutrition, but will also naturally edge out some of the more calorically dense foods without eliciting that cycle of restriction or guilt. She's not swearing off all of her favorite foods like donuts, but rather she's making easy swaps when it feels doable for her and giving herself the grace to lean on convenience foods when needs be. So in conclusion, while any intentional fat loss regimen isn't officially compatible with the intuitive eating model, I think a lot of what Natasha describes is kind of like gentle nutrition tips combined with honoring her hunger and fullness cues. And honestly, if that works for her, amazing. You do you. But I do think most people watching our videos are not quite there yet. They're not so able to simultaneously learn to trust their body while actively seeking weight loss. So it's important to not try to duplicate Natasha's experience or anyone else's for that matter. So I say for science-backed inspiration and realistic balanced meals and snacks, check out Natasha's impressive repertoire of content. But as always, speak to a healthcare provider about your unique needs before attempting anything she does for herself. Same for me, same for any other influencer out there. And on that note, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on who you'd like to see in your view next. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.